So, <clears throat> I think many of you have heard from me and maybe other Buddhist teachers and teachings the value of being embodied. Uh, the value, so much so that I sometimes will with kind of imagine that it would be nice if we had translated sati not as mindfulness, but as uh, bodyfulness. Uh, it's such an important part of this practice. And in the two classic Buddha, uh, teachings by the Buddha on mindfulness practice, in the discourse on the four foundations of mindfulness and the discourse on uh, mindfulness of breathing, uh, it begins with an emphasis on mindfulness of the body. And um, now one of the reasons for this is that the body, the more present we are for our body, the more we're aware, the more there's awareness that's alive and, and kind of available through the body, the more the body becomes an instrument for the growth of meditation practice. It becomes the vehicle and space for some of the deeper feelings, some of the deeper qualities of meditation that begin to arise. It's kind of like as the body receives some of the benefits of meditation, those benefits are augmented or, or um, um, not augmented, but those, those benefits grow and fill out and we get the most out of them. So what I'm talking about here partly is that as the body becomes more alive and more sensitive and more of an instrument of sensations and experiences and feelings, is not just feeling the body itself, but it's also start the body becomes the the sense door for feeling some of the goodness that comes from meditation. And I would use the word goodness in a very abstract, vague word way, like just like maybe like the word all the some of the positive feelings that can come with meditation. So um, classically, it's joy and happiness. But it could also be contentment. I like the word ease quite a bit. Um, there can be uh, gladness. There's uh, deep feelings of equanimity, deep feelings of, um, of um, confidence that can arise. Even feelings of being of inner cleanliness and inner uh, purity that uh, really are embodied feelings that kind of course through us. So all these qualities are felt more fully when they're felt throughout the whole body, felt with the body. If the body is not available, then it becomes a mental thing. And sometimes that's quite wonderful and, and profound in its own way. But it's really, uh, especially in the beginning stages of meditation, it's really a way of um, being quite limited in the experience. And it gives us a, a different impression of what meditation's about. Um, a different orientation, which if it's too much towards the mind, uh, doesn't really help us develop the wholeness, um, the, uh, uh, the unification of all of ourselves, which is ideally what we're looking for in Buddhist meditation. I think it's one of the meanings of samadhi is unification, bringing it all together here, present. So the so again, the body is not just a you know, uh, a bunch of physical stuff that we have to carry around with us. The body is a <clears throat> is a significant uh, repository of nerve endings, significant uh, location for uh, the emotions, the feelings, the the goodness of meditation to course through us or to fill us and be here. Um, uh, the um, the, so to begin tuning in, being relaxing the body, sitting in with the body, feeling the body, is uh, one way in which we begin to um, uh, open up to this repository of goodness. As I said, classically, what comes next after the first four steps of Anapanasati, what comes next as the practice deepens, is some feelings of well-being, joy or ease or gladness and something like that. And so 
uh, to know that that's coming, to know that's part of meditation, um, it can el- and then encourage us to be a little bit more sensitive to when they start uh, appearing, the hints of them appear. And we start feeling a little bit the, the, these good feelings that come. Sometimes it feels like pleasure in the body or tingling at places, l- a sense of lightness that comes. And, uh, and it's not that we're uh, trying to make it happen so much or, or searching for it or striving for it, but when it begins to show, show themselves a little bit, there's an art to opening to them, to relaxing with them, to include them so they go along with the breathing or the breathing goes along with them. So we uh, encourage us to become even more embodied, to feel these in our body, and as we feel this goodness, to kind of breathe with it and open with it and continue this process of feeling and sensing and developing uh, as we go along. And um, so the uh, contentment is part of this. To feel contentment um, allows, it isn't like, the, again, a moral obligation to feel content, but it allows for this filling out of the practice and really being rooted and centered here in this body, feeling more and more. The same thing with this uh, idea of being in the present moment and not thinking about the past and the future. It's not like a moral obligation we have to do that, but when we're no longer caught up in the past and future and thoughts, it allows for possibility of filling out more into the wholeness of this moment that includes so much more of us. And it's kind of like a... uh, a momentum, a movement towards becoming really whole and present with all of who we are. And part of that comes along with relaxation and, and uh, tranquility, calmness, is a, more and more space for uh, delight, a joy, a well-being, a sense of pleasure in just being alive and being here. And I think of this joy of meditation as being a joy that has no opposite. It's just a joy that exists kind of in its own way. If it had an opposite, then, you know, it's, we can swing from one to the other. But it has no opposite, so certainly we can not have it, not be there. But it isn't that it swings, it's not part of a pendulum that goes from one to the other. So, for example, if your joy is dependent on praise, the opposite then is blame, and then the pendulum can swing because it's dependent on getting something. Or if your joy is dependent on um, uh, success, then there can be failure. If it's dependent on physical pleasure, it can be dependent on things being uncomfortable. And so, but the joy of meditation does not have an opposite. It just has this uh, wonderful, simple, and clear quality of surfacing and arising and being here without really, in a sense, not depending on the things that come and go in the world so much, but as a wellspring that flows within the body. And so the more we can kind of center ourselves in the body, relax and be present, the more um, uh, we will be, um, you know, starting to open up to our potential, our capacity for well-being, for joy, for happiness. And, uh, and that's a wonderful thing. And it turns out that meditative joy and happiness is a wonderful, it, it continues this process of unification, of wholeness, of bringing more and more of ourselves into the picture so that we can um, um, continue on a path to liberation.